Get in, buckle up, and come for a ride with the Hoonatics. Cars, bikes, and anything else with an engine in it. Let's go. A Snap-on franchise is a tool to your freedom, and we currently have franchise opportunities available across Australia. Snap-on have the best brands in the industry, a supportive network with exclusive training, as well as financing options to get you on the road. Are you ready to drive your own success? Visit snaponfranchises.com.au or call 1800 762 766 for more information. Alrighty, we are here at Gilman Speedway tonight. Now, you're probably going to notice something different. Uh, we're not starting with the big loud mouth Jason. He's disappeared. He's actually, um, Jason's off on a secret mission, which I'm going to give away. He's actually, for the Adelaide Auto Expo, organised a thing called a barn find auction. So he's taken off to uh, go and pick up one of the cars. I'm just chasing mozzies here. But um, instead, tonight we're doing motorbike stuff, and everyone knows I love bikes. Bikes is pretty much everything I talk about. So I managed to find this guy. Hey. You might have seen him before on our podcast. This is Davo Johnson, Adelaide guy, Isle of Man TT rider. And, like his, and his number one <laughs> fanboy here. Rapping. Thanks, buddy. So, um, Davo. How you going, mate? Thanks for uh, coming and helping out. Because, I mean, it would have been a bit boring if it was just me tonight. But um, what have you been up to? Uh, not a great deal since, uh, since the last race, the Classic TT. Just, uh, just getting drunk every night. No, yeah, after I mean, after taking the up. Yeah, yeah. After that, I sort of got to a point. I was like, yeah, I got to start focusing up because I got my cow Grand Prix coming up. So I, uh, yeah, I stopped uh, drinking and now I'm training. But saying that, <laughs> we got a beer. Yeah, we got beer. So <laughs> we, it is yeah. a chilly night here. I've just shaved my head, so I'm feeling it a bit. It's freaking um, freezing. But um, yeah, just been in the shed, bloody working. I've got. I'm a car guy now. I got a Cadillac. So I've uh, been working on that and... We well, are a bit of a pimp, so you know... Yeah, you know, big... The, the, air, the airbags are causing me all sorts of grief, so it's... Uh, no, it's, uh, yeah, basically just been chilling and, yeah, enjoying being home, really. Yeah, nice, nice. Yeah, well, I've been doing the same thing. I'm working on a Land Cruiser project and um, that's just uh, started going go on Hoon TV. Got three race bikes on the middle of the building, one that I'm going to sell to Billy. Yeah, he wants yeah. it, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I mean... We are here tonight. I mean, obviously you're a bit of a legend. You've uh, Isle of Man TT. Anyone that does that's just uh, either crazy or just a, you know, loves riding. Yeah. But um, we also have another legend that we're talking to tonight. Mm -hmm. and, we um, do. I don't know whether he likes being called a legend. Sometimes people think that's uh, referring to being old, but uh, we know him as a legend because of just legendary status. And, and like just going through, I've made some notes here so we don't have to go through all the history of everything, but um, at the uh, tender age of 50, this man here has won three World Superbike Championships, all on Italian bikes. He's raced in the MotoGPs over four seasons, I believe. Raced for Ducati, Honda, Suzuki. He's uh, had a crack in a V8 supercar. He's pretty much done it all. So He's a car guy too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, without further ado, we're going to bring him in and, uh, and have a it. chat. So. Uh, Welcome, Troy Bayless. Hey guys, good to see you. Thanks for having me. Well, hang on, hang on. We're going to do this way. properly. We're going to do this properly. Cheers, boys. Cheers, eh? That, that one's done. Yeah. So, so the the token motorbike nerd here, in between Isle of Man TT rider, world superbike champion, feeling a bit. Uh, no, no, it's actually it's actually pretty good. So, Troy, we we're, we're here first and foremost because you're in Adelaide right now because of your event. You're a co-owner manager of the Australian Supercross Championship. Yep. So we're here. <clears throat> It's right next to Gilman it? Speedway, they've just been carving it up and making the track. Last year it was a brilliant Crazy. event. So, yeah, we have around uh, eight, eight and a half thousand ton of dirt out there at the moment. The boys have been bringing the dirt in for the last two days, and um, I mean, we're, you know, Port Adelaide and uh, Gilman Speedway. It's a good venue, and I think uh, it's looking like this is going to be the biggest and probably the best track of the year. And um, we know for a fact that last year the guys loved the track, so it's going to be better again. And um, the guys really love the dirt here. I know that sounds weird when you say, you know, I mean, a lot of bike guys are like that. Anyway, oh, I guess it's like, the, it's like road racing. The quality of the dirt, it's so. different bitumen too, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. So and, the, and like from a spectator point of view, like both of us were here last year and it was a really good event. It was yeah. just good atmosphere, great racing, yeah, and just heap of fun. It's a pretty easy place and you perch yourself up on the hill or there's some, um, you know, there's some nice places to be seating up there and it's, it's a great night. It's like, um, it's not too expensive and uh, it's, a, it's an easy night out. Now, Aside from that, like I wanted to, you know, like I mentioned to you before the podcast, 
a million people have done interviews with you about your history and all that. So, I mean, anyone can go and type Troy Bayless into Wikipedia and find all about you. But as far as uh, I wanted to do a little bit about your history and then a bit about what's happening now. So I'm going to start off. Davo's got a couple of questions yeah. as well. First and foremost, my first question to you is, what was your first bike? And, and tell us any stories related to that bike. Um, well, it was a Honda Z50, like a little monkey bike. And I think a lot of, a lot of people had them in the past. Uh, as the years go on, you know, a lot of the kids, you know, ended up with peewees and stuff like that. But because I'm 50, it was um, 50 years old. I mean, back then it was, a, it was a Honda monkey bike. And it happened at Christmas time. I was around five years old, I guess. We were just living on a, like a pretty small farm, wheat farm. And um, yeah, along came a motorbike so I could I could ride and ride with my dad and help him do a bit of work around the farm, basically. And so that, that bike though, I mean, obviously you tried Baylor, so did it get ridden a little bit harder than all the other Z50s around? Or? Um, I've, I've seen pictures, but not for a long time, but that, that bike, I mean, the, the bars, like they used to have like, you could adjust them like a bit, like it was a really old school one. But I remember though, the bars were just smashed in. And you don't have bike, any more? <laughs> no, I wish no. I did. Ah. Um, and it had blinkers on it, but of course they were all smashed. And I, I think I probably had it for th you know, a good three years or so. And um, I mean, but I was just a kid riding a bike. There's no no thought about you know racing bikes. It was just like a... No, no epic crashes or a, anything like that? No, that I can remember back <laughs> then. I can barely remember last year. <laughs> well, I guess what, what, what stepped it up to the next level for you when you realised that you loved riding bikes and that was your thing, you know? Um, well, from there it went from that bike to a, a CR, it was another Honda actually, the Red Engine CR80. Um, and then basically started doing a bit of Jim Carna and then that led into some junior motocross. So it sort of, you know, started to really like the bikes when I was around eight or nine and then some a bit of serious sort of racing from 10 to... 14 whether it be motocross or dirt track yeah yeah, yeah. nice nice well I, I guess um and and like i was just saying there tell us about your, your first race you ever did like what 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 happened like you went out there we just wait for this truck to go yeah. past <laughs> we are at a we are at a speedway so we're going to leave this rolling yeah she's, because um, they are still building the track it's currently thursday night and the events in two nights time so it's, uh, yeah, the boys will, um, like the, the guys are having dinner now and they'll be back in the machines and they'll probably go through to 10 or 11 tonight. Yeah, so if you, because this podcast runs on iTunes, yeah. it's uh, for the people that are just listening to this in their cars or whatever, if you're hearing trucks and for, uh, front end loaders and stuff like that, that's because they're building a motocross track behind us, so right we'll right super cross track. <laughs> yeah. It's happening right now. Yeah, so yeah, so with that question there, like tell us about your very first race, how did you go and, oh. and where was it? Well. Uh, like I said, like Jim Carn is not like racing sort yeah. of thing. So when when it eventually happened, um, I remember my dad said, well, "Okay, we're going we're going to a motocross race," and I, I'm pretty sure it was at Mill Merrin, which was up on the you know the Queensland New South Wales border, you know, a couple of hours from where where we lived. And uh, I remember back then I was crying because I didn't want to go, <laughs> and that was on the CR80, uh, the red engine one. I think that might have been like around a 1980 model, I'm guessing, or 79. And um, I was like very close to to last, like maybe second or third last. And um, we started going to a few races and that happened like that for quite some time. Um, and, um, we finally found some talent eventually. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was weird. Um, whether it was that year or the following year, like a, an, another, a new bike arrived and it was a YZ80H. And um, it was school holidays and all I did was ride every day. And then when we went back to racing the, the following the series that we were doing, I guess it was the Queensland Championships. Um, we went back and I started winning, so that was a bit of a turnaround. Yeah, it was funny going from like way down the back of the pack to, to racing at the front all the time. But yeah, How'd you feel getting your first win? Oh, fantastic, of yeah, course. Yeah. I mean, nothing yeah, like, there's more, nothing yeah. like winning a race. So, I mean, we, we did a lot of racing around that area, um, but we didn't really, we weren't crazy like into, you know, like following races all around Australia. and and doing it week in, week out, we just go every few weeks to a race. It was mainly so, dirt track, not, not uh, so much uh, motocross. Mainly motocross then. It was motocross. Yeah, and then we moved back into, because uh, originally I was from Taree, the mid-north coast, and we moved back in there when I was around 13. And um, that's when we started doing dirt, like proper dirt track, um, because we had the old bar roadside circuit just down outside of the town, so we used to ride there quite often. Yeah. But back then, like, 
um, that was like mid 80s I guess and like back then if you remember the club you had everyone had a key and you could go and ride out the track whenever you wanted so you could go after school good, have a ride and, yeah, yeah not like that anymore <laughs> no no all right so we're well, moving on I guess um I wanted to talk about a bit a bit of other stuff like one thing more recently that that age back then you're now the second coming you've got Ollie yeah so tell us about I mean as a racer and stuff like that what was it like having a son and you know not knowing for him what was going to be his future and now having him in bike racing how's that all sort of evolved and yeah built? it's a weird one um because mostly when we took off over to the uk back in 98 uh mitchell and abby were really young like mitchell was probably two and a half and abby was you know one and a half or you know the kids were so young so we took out took off over there and our kids were like you know used to come to the tracks all the time and feel, feel like they missed out on a bit of stuff and um, they're doing great now and they're having a great time but when we moved back um, you know there's a big age difference between Ollie and um, Abby like seven years or so mm. so when we come back I had more time on my hands and you know he started riding and then then he's you know ended up started racing but he's been around like bikes his whole life and and uh it's it's just sort of normal for him and i really expected that he was going to do some sort of racing was yeah. that was uh, that what was the thought when you uh first took him out there was it quite a nervous <laughs> moment for you being a, a um, dad and like because obviously you're like on the other side of it and now all of a sudden yeah. you're you're like the dad and your kids riding that must have been like pretty yeah, uh, pretty well, weird feeling we started off in in kart racing and then uh long story short that crossed over to bikes and you know he did dirt track and not really motocross but you know just fun riding and stuff like that uh which finally led into the road racing and i remember the first well we used to be able to go up to extreme karting on the on the kart track there yeah. and um so i helped like get him going there and we used to ride together a lot and had so much fun there it was incredible in incredible place to ride um and then we went to his first like proper race which was at morgan park and um he was on a little metric kit um no, ADCC, 80cc or yeah. something yeah and um so kim and i went up to the tower to, to watch this race <laughs> and uh it was raining and he sort of was like you know running fifth or sixth or something and come under the bridge and um I, ha I had the video going and he come around and he just lost the back had a crash and hit the corner of the ripple strip with his hip done a bit of a oh, little bit yeah, of damage yeah. you know and i remember as he's sliding over the over the over the gravel and then and then tumbling i remember kim saying you can burn that <laughs> She's over but it. we're still racing now and um you know he's he's uh just turned 16 he's riding 600 uh, at all the asbk races and he's doing pretty good and he loves it mm. so that's great and i do feel like like a really normal dad and a nervous dad when i see him racing um with everyone on the track it's like really hard a lot of times i'll just watch live timing mm. um but it's so funny because like when we we'll go riding and if i get, get to ride like his other r6 and we go riding together I like we ride really hard together and have a great time and it's so different to being on the sideline and watching him go past at yeah. full speed and riding with the other guys it's like i'm completely nervous wreck it's still easy to stay with him when you're uh, riding with him yeah I'm, it... like it's getting getting pretty close i've still got a little bit up my sleeve yeah <laughs> not much i'm not, only depends on which track we're at um but like places like morgan park i'm only good for about three tenths my best time is like three tenths quicker than him at the yeah, moment right. um so he's picking it up and um but i feel like i can't like teach him too much more now it's got to come from when he's riding and learning the other guys i just help ba ba help basically get him started and teach him the basics does he yeah. listen to you when you got some advice or is it yes and no i oh, know i didn't listen <laughs> yeah. I didn't listen to my dad too much I yeah mean, no it's yes it and no good, yeah good um, advice but i didn't want to listen to it, you know the thing is like that i know now that i know that he wants to do well and mm. like especially like when they get on bigger bikes you it's so fast you don't want to be you know just gotta uh, let him go w would you comparatively speaking yourself and him like obviously he's the junior version of you but as a rider would you say he's just got a heap of raw talent or he's learned a lot from you over the years or i think um the i think he's learned a lot over the years but also one thing that's definitely helped him is like when i started we knew nothing about bikes mm. so i'd be crashing my brains out and things would be going wrong and because we were learning from scratch and basically 
run around in circles. Yeah. So what I've been able to help do is like have the bike basically a good bike to start with. Mm. And um, especially with the R6s, there's a, a range where you go in like where the bikes are going to be good anyway. But I mean, that can make a big difference like from kid crashing a lot and getting the confidence knocked out of them. Yeah. So I think a lot of things like that have definitely helped along the way. But sometimes I can see like um, the way he rides, he's definitely got a bit of mongrel in him. Yeah. Um, but like, when I watch him, he's definitely a smooth, I think he's a smoother version of me mm. uh, where I might have been a bit more rugged. Yeah, well, I guess the, the hardware these days as well, and that was probably is probably less related to ASBK and stuff like that. But um, going back to your racing, uh, when you were like right in the thick of it back, what was that, 2008 when you retired? Yeah. Like, how would you compare the bikes and the actual racing from then to now? Like, you know, do you think it's easier now with the equipment or? I think they're going pretty, the bikes, you know, they always end up going a little bit faster. Mm. But when you look at the lap times over the years, like, you might say, just say, at some tracks they're going two seconds a lap faster. Mm. I mean, it's only two seconds, but like, still, you're just still only on a bit of tyre that wide. And yeah. um, I think, yeah, they're definitely, I think every sport's taken it to the next level a bit. Yeah. And I think it looks like they're riding just more percent, yeah. over, the, over the limit a bit more often now. Um, whereas what I think we used to be able to ride within the limit a bit, and every now and then you have to go outside the way. But, you know, yeah. a lot of people used to say, that they'd watch me ride and and I'd, I always looked like really not out of shape but like wild yeah and but I think maybe the way I had the bike I used to have to just wrestle a little bit more and it just looked a bit untidy mm. because I never used to really feel like you still look more tight more tidy than that foggy ever did <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a wild man on the bike <laughs> when he grabbed the brake he'd jump up and yeah, like yeah. everything looked exaggerated but yeah he certainly uh, did some wind in his time that's oh, for sure yeah, that's yeah. It. Yeah. <laughs> i get uh, one controversial question i've got that's not really related to you even though you raced against rossi um was this whole thing these days where people saying oh you know rossi's getting old and stuff like that but he's still right up there yeah but the the thing people saying that Marquez is the best rider in the world and all that sort of thing I still like I'm a bit of a Rossi fan I'll yeah I am that. as well and I sort of think of it and I go well he used to race 500 two strikes and stuff like that and now Marquez is on the electronic masterpiece yeah so I mean what's your thoughts you know if you say got both of those riders and sent them back in time and put them both on older bikes yeah, how do you think they'd go against each other then or uh, it's a hard, do you, do you, who do you think's a better rider it's a really hard one it's so hard to come up with that but the mm. way all the younger riders now like well there's so much electronics involved now so like some of the guys like Valentino mm. would go back and I guess he'd be more used to some of the old school ways yeah but everything's just changing so it's I well, really don't know I, how. Guess, I guess a way I, I look at it too they did a, a thing a few years back where Lewis Hamilton jumped in one of Senna's old cars yeah and he was like blown away by how hard it was to drive yeah yeah and he was saying this is like really hard work compared to what i'm used to so and that's the way i sort of look at it i'm like you think those bikes would have been pretty violent um to ride back then whereas now i know they're super fast and everything yeah but they're quite, quite well, precise so oh 500 is well, another level though back in the yeah uh, yeah like late 90 90 yeah for sure whatever, yeah. but i mean if you went around to all the bikes now just and switched all the traction control off and sent them out well we would have like plenty of people going to the moon mm -hmm. yeah but, well, and, and like I had a question here where I was sort of, um, so you spent some time in MotoGP. Yep. And, and so they're probably the epitome of bikes and stuff like that. What's it like to ride a MotoGP bike? I mean, it's like any bike rider's fantasy to ride. Yeah, like I, mean, I mean, like basically you're riding the, the best that can be built and can be bought. So that's the cool thing about it, definitely. Mm. And um, I didn't really... I haven't thought about it for quite some time, but I mean, like, I'd be, I'd love to jump back on one now and have a ride and just sit, feel the difference again now. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, to see how far they've sort of come along and see how if they are easier again to ride, or because I know from when I started with Loris with the project back in 2002, and then when I jumped back on the bike in 2006 and had that win at Valencia, how much night, you know, how the bike had progressed. Yeah. And I just, it'd be interesting to see again now and where they're at. I mean, you see it on the track and. I mean, they're riding really fast and the styles of the riders have changed over the years the way they're riding them a little bit. Um, so it would be interesting to, to jump on one and just feel is for that, it yourself. Is that a possibility? Because like, uh, Stoner does it here and there, doesn't he, with the Ducati? Uh, 
Um, yeah, well, when I stopped at the end of 2008, like um, I used to go back every year for quite a few years, like four or five years, and um, basically I'd go to a test at Mangello and and would, they'd set it up for me, like, you know, to have a ride. And it was like, they got their own test riders to do that stuff, but for me it was more like, it was like to go back and put the needle in the arm. So yeah, that was yeah. good, but I haven't done that, like, since, you know, since 2000. 15 when I did that wild card ride on the out of the blue at, at Phillip Island when um, uh, was it Guliano oh, yeah, yeah, had yeah, the crash well, 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 but I mean I jumped on it then and I was like near 10 kilos heavier than I was now and I was, it was just like you know a few days before I just like needed to get out of my system still got a top and 10 didn't you I think 7 or something yeah, I can't remember uh, threw myself over the bars at, at uh, Lukey Heights as well but I landed on the Landed on the down ramp type oh, of thing, so that, that was, was, really, it was a real soft landing. Yeah. Thing, yeah, it was a weird yeah, one. Yeah. Um, but well, yeah, I'd be better off on, hopping on the bike now, even another five years later, because like mm. I was far from fit then. Yeah, and it was just like. Yeah, and I mean, even though you're 50 now, you're quite fit and you've been racing yeah, recently. Yeah, probably miss a bit of, um, probably the last bit of the eye of the tiger, I'd say, but I could still jump on and be, mm. you know, not bad. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, hey, uh, MotoGP's coming up in a not too far from now, and you'll be there, and Jack yep. Miller, if you've got a spare bike. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Nah, well, anyway, yeah. no. Nah, that what's happened. Like, not many people really understand, but um, after 49, you can't take any part in any GP race. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what about a parade lap? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. No. but I'm, I'm going to be busy down there doing... Troy Bayless parade lap would be... I'm like, going to be busy. Yeah, yeah like 130s, yeah. Well, I'm having a ride in the support race on our on our bike for yeah. um, the Desmond Sport Ducati, so I'm really looking forward to that. To... There's a ship just coming across Jesus. the road by the sounds of We are at Port Adelaide. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at least now we know that uh, Rossi can't go past 50 then. <laughs> yeah, I that's it. I didn't realise that rule. Yeah. So uh, you can't ride into... But I mean, it's always 40 now, I think, and um, wow, that's a long time. I, I just don't know how he can be still doing it after all these years. That's a long time. He was like mm. on the GP scene at, I don't know, 15 or 16. Yeah, well, I guess people sort of like, I mean, people have got all their own opinions and the way I see it personally is the fact that he just loves doing it. I know, there's probably a lot of commercial side to it as well where like, GP probably wouldn't be the same if he wasn't on the track. Yeah, yeah. Fans and all that was, but it just seems to, like my opinion is he just loves doing it. Oh yeah, he does. So he doubt. wouldn't be there if he wasn't because he doesn't have the money obviously. On, yeah. on Monday after a race, he basically goes back to Trevilla and is on his ranch yeah, riding again. Yeah, riding again. And I think that... Um, he loves riding. <laughs> yeah, so that's only really started like his dirt track in the last four or five years. And mm. I think um, that's helped him. Mm. I think it's helped him just, you know, be a little bit more sharp. Yeah. And uh, I definitely honestly believe it's really helped his cause yeah 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 and, and it's a cool sort of for him it's like a cool thing because he has heaps of other riders going yeah. there from all different you know codes of racing and it's just like a hangout thing so yeah it'd be yeah. funny i'll see him like next week down there and i'll just go and have a quick chat and he'll be I'll just say, man, you're still going. I can't believe it. And he'll he'll have a joke about fucking 50 and still going. <laughs> but it's yeah. funny, like even last year when um, I did the the GP support race, you know, I'll roll down pit lane on the bike and some of my old bosses will come out and I'll just shake their head and go, you know, yeah, what, what are you doing? That's do? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> funny. Yeah, it's the, oh, I guess one yeah. of those things if you love doing it. And uh, one question, like we mentioned before, like obviously uh, Bathurst just gone by this weekend, and I was I was there. You know, I worked bit for the supercars but you you have had a stint driving a v8 supercar yeah. with a was it fiori yep yeah so tell us about that i mean it was only a short time but what was it like and it was um it was fun though i mean like i'm a rev head uh, i love my cars i've watched been watching Bathurst basically whenever i've been in australia you know it was um as a kid i'd watch it with my dad watch a couple of hours in the morning like after the start and then watch a bit around lunch and then watch some in the afternoon uh, and I and I watched the you know the last I think it was 50 laps on Sunday just gone past mm. um, and to get to chaotic, drive yeah, yeah and to get to have a drive one of them cars is really cool and mm. I got to drive one around Bathurst um, went and I did some laps and also at Phillip Island yep uh, it's great I mean mm. I, I sort of was going okay in the car but honestly cut a long story short you know them guys have been driving them things since our kids starting out in carts. Mm. And I think, um, you know, a lot of motorcycle guys could get to a, a decent level pretty quick. Mm. But to find that last um, that last bit, uh, that comes down to many years in the 
yeah. in the in the you know the hard yards of the like sport. Like Casey Stoner when he went into V8, so he couldn't quite get that last little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's hard to get that bit yeah. out. And honestly, I driving around Bathurst, I would have I've raced Bathurst on the bike back in '94. I would have felt safer on a on a bike riding around Bathurst than I did in the car. Yeah. Like, I'm not joking. Yeah. Um, it's pretty hectic. Yeah. It's pretty hectic. And actually, I crashed um, at the Hay Shed in a Carrera Cup car. I was doing some oh, yeah. uh, a couple of races with Mike Patrese. Yep. And uh, I had a crash there and knocked myself out in one. Mm. And that did you roll it? No, it just went real oh, fast hit, yeah. off the grass is wet, and I went into the wall. I done so much damage to his car. Sorry, Michael. <laughs> uh, yeah, knocked me out. And I remember I just let go of the wheel. I was just along for the ride. It was horrible. I'd much rather high side yeah. any day. Yeah, well, it's a pretty violent hit. I mean, um, like you're saying about Bathurst, I guess uh, on the weekend there was the two, um, the American team, the um, Rossi and uh, Hinchcliffe, the American. That didn't last long, that one. Well, they they, they did all right, but they're both IndyCar drivers with like a pretty good, solid history of driving. But the experience around Bathurst, that you could see from all the other drivers, they were still right down the back because the other guys had just done so many laps of Bathurst. And yeah. You know every bump, you know, bit and part yeah. of the track. I think, um, um, you know, to, if you wanted to do something a bit easier, I mean, it'd be better to do. But I mean, like the, the V8s, they're not an easy car to drive. I mean, they're 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 a weird they're a weird thing. They, you know, all the guys talk about it. Then, even like a top European Porsche driver or whatever can come over, mm. jump in one of them, and they can struggle. Yeah. So yeah, that's how it is. Well, now getting getting back to your bike racing, um, so you've won three world. Superbike Championships. That's yeah, it's got pretty lucky, really. I mean, <laughs> I mean, a lot of hard work went in there, but I mean, well, wow. And they, and they weren't one after the other. You had one, and then I think it was a break, and then same deal, three in a row over five years. Yeah. But, I mean, what was it like the first time you won it? That would have just been... Yeah, it's, yeah. it's pretty crazy. I mean, it stems back to, um, to starting out in the UK at the British Superbike Championship, and um, Road Ducati's there, and we had a win in... Um, in 99 in the British Championship and Carl Fogarty who was a world champion at the time presented me the trophy and um, it was like when he was handing me over that trophy I was like saying to myself as he did it I want your ride you know like <laughs> and it was at that stage that I realized I was you know fast mm. and um, it wasn't too long that I ended up in the factory team and like wow uh, I went from like good bikes in the British Championship to riding for possibly the, the best team in the world in super bikes uh, a great team, so you know. Of course, you got to lift your game and do everything you can to to, to do the job on it. And mm. you know, when it did happen, like um, in 2001, we'd only done half the year in 2000, and uh, it was a bit of a fairy tale for it to happen in 2001, the World Championship. So, pretty blessed by that. I bet it's still good to like reminisce here and there about it, because obviously it's been a while since you're in the in the, the championship and you got all these good results and like life goes on and you got kids and yeah and yeah then sort of like, oh this is my dad and, and and I'm I look up to you because I was like a big fan as a kid and I was as I was coming up I was watching you and um, yeah with like as life goes on yeah you've got to obviously it feels like a, yeah. a lifetime ago and um, you know I walk past the bikes I've got like the championship bikes and. They're beautiful, and but still, it just feels like wow, it was so long ago. Um, but then sometimes you might see something like somewhere, and it'll just re, re kick in and go, yeah, it was good. It <laughs> was good. <laughs> I was riding for the. It's so. I mean, you sort of get spoiled, and you can see why some people lose their, you know, sportsmen go off the rails and whatever. Like you get spoiled, and like riding, everything was, you know, best, and you get, you know, and now I'm back to normal. And mm. I actually like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm good now, but I mean, you can get too caught up in all that crap. So, um, well, bikes wise, though, like the bikes you've got, what, what have you, what have you got? I mean, you don't have to go. Through, you've probably got a few. Yeah, what, bikes what are, and cars. What bikes are the, and cars. What are the oh, special? Yeah, what are the special things <laughs> under the bayless roof? You know? uh, I mean, basically, I just have my championship bikes. Yep. Um, 2001, 2006, and 2008. Yep. And then um, the replica bike number 21 from 2001, and the replica of. 21 of 2008 because I haven't got the 999 because I think Hodson won that no, on the yeah. 999 before I come back and won on it. So he, I'm guessing he's got the feeler one. Mm. Um, yeah, so them, you know, dirt track bikes, bloody lot, few KDMs and bits and pieces and 
Uh, I'm not really, or I am a car man. I like, I love my Sprinter. <laughs> I got me a Mercedes Sprinter, the Pedo van. I, I love, well, what, I love what, my van. What can't they do? <laughs> <laughs> I love my van. Uh, yeah, I've got a SS Ute. Um, I'm a Ford man, but like when I said to Kim, oh, I need a Ute. Uh, she I'm said, "Well, you for sale." <laughs> yeah. Was it? Oh, you do, it's a drag yeah. car. Yeah. 1,000 horsepower Ford yeah. Ute. <laughs> a what? A 1,000 horsepower Ford drag car. Mm, nice. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, that'll that look good in your shed, mate. Yeah. That'll look good, go. yeah. <laughs> we'll talk later. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm a Ford man, always have been, And but Kim said if you're getting a Ute, you, you know, you can have a Ute, but it's got to be Holden, so I've got the last, the, I think it's the last Holden, the LS3. Um, been done by techno a bit of work on it so it's oh, pretty yeah, good nice. yeah yeah but it's been lost my uh, oldest boys moved home and uh i don't see my ute anymore oh, <laughs> he he's, drives it. he's apprehended it <laughs> um yeah, i, I guess else? with those championship bikes as well oh, with uh cool. with with ollie yeah uh, kicking around racing as he sort of like said oh dad throw us the keys let me ride your championship bike yeah is that, is no he hasn't a, really said that, that but like he's always he'll sit on our bike that jonesy rides now and he'll just say when am i having a ride oh, and, yeah. uh, we, and we just say when you win a race in the 600s like we'll see <laughs> yeah, we'll yeah, see. yeah but yeah he's pretty keen it's funny how kids um doesn't take long he rode the 300s and then you know it was like oh i want to ride i want more power and now he's had nearly a year on the 600 and He's like, yeah, I want to ride a super bike. Like, yeah. We've only just had not quite done a year yet on the 600. Seems like yesterday like, since he started, really. Like, yeah, a, it goes yeah. so fast, the time. Mm. That's crazy. Yeah. And well, that, and so all this, like, we've, uh, we've only starting to race, and now you're racing again. Yeah. What, what sort of brought that on? Did you just thought, you just thought, give it a go oh, again? Oh, no, just... it's really weird. Uh, it was two years ago. We were down at the Island GP. I guess it was two years ago. Might have been three. Um, and we're in the Ducati tent, had a few beers and basically uh, the long story, the long and short of it was um, <laughs> we're standing there and they said, you should jump back on the bike. And I was like, oh, I don't know about that. And they said, well, basically if you want our support, you're going to hop back on it. Yeah, nice. That was that. <laughs> so I had to drop 13 kilos, get fit, and that's how I ended up back on the bike. And um, the plan was to me still to be on the bike again this year. But then I had the crash at Phillip Island and broke a couple of fingers. Mm. I couldn't make the second round and Jonesy had already done the first round and got good points. So we decided to, um, well, we asked Mike if he'd like to, to ride it. And uh, he was pretty keen. He was in, in between whether he had a job in Spain or not and it was looking half and half. So uh, he decided to stay here, which we're pretty happy about. And um, he's done a great job all year. Mm. Uh, he's a good kid to have on the bike and um, he's fast. He's easy to deal with. Uh, he doesn't crash much as well, um, and we're, we've got one round left, and uh, you know, we could possibly win the championship this year. Yeah, no, and it's good to watch too, and um, yeah, I guess it gives you a chance to sort of like work with him and with Ollie as well, rather yeah. than having a stress about racing. So. Yeah, I was really happy to to actually um, to be back off the bike. Mm. Like I wasn't really 100% wanting wanting to go racing. Mm. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy where I sit now and uh, to have a ride every now and then on the bike, on the super bike, and uh, have a ride of Ollie on the 600s, like, wow, that's, I don't want anything more than that. Yeah. And the, the emotions, I suppose, especially with Ollie, when you win as a team, Ollie hasn't won yet, but when he does win, I yeah. bet the feeling when he wins is gonna be exactly the same as when you won your last World Superbike race. I think race. it'll probably feel something like that, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely, yeah. Well, I've got a couple more questions, because we're sort of coming up to time, but, um, Obviously, we're here, so I want to talk to you a little bit about this. But yep. um, tell us about how you and Mark got together. Obviously, not the whole story, yep. but um, how how is it now being an event promoter, and, and what's it, what's it like running these events? Um, yeah, well, basically, busy, yeah. Well, I first met Mark uh, would have been probably two years after I come back, so we'll say 2000, even 11 or 2012. Um, he'd sort of got me along to become a, uh, I guess it was a ambassador for one of the shows. Um, and then, then long and short of it is we end up taking over the shows and, um, and that was that. We've been doing the Moto Expos and now, now doing events as well. Um, it's funny because I thought I'd just come home and not do anything for a while, have at least a couple of years off and see what we're going to do. And then um, when we spoke about things that were, the possibilities that were out there to do, um, 
I was sort of, you know, I was pretty keen, pretty keen to, to, to give this a shot of what we're doing now. And uh, it's been good. It's been, it's been tough, but it's been good. And uh, we're working away, chipping away, doing, doing our thing. And um, Kim's highly involved now. I sort of think I palmed quite a bit of it off on the Kim because I'm, I'm pretty old school. I mean, I, I, like, I like like working like physically, but mm. like for me, give me paperwork, it's not really going to work. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it's good. So like, I guess, we turn up here and you're around moving stuff around. Yeah, and, you know, you know, lobby, yeah. It's, um, my name's behind it, Troy Bottas Events. Mm. And uh, of course, you know, I probably know some of the right people for things to happen sometimes and whatever. But... And also, it's good for me to be involved with the whole industry rather than just Ducati all the time because I was mm. sort of known as just, you know, Troy Road, Ducati, whatever. Yeah. But now with the shows and the events that we put on, we deal with all the, all the motorcycle industry. So it's pretty cool. Um, but honestly, Kim and Mark themselves, um, they work so hard behind doors to, to make all these things happen. And uh, we've got a good crew when we come to these events to, uh, to, to actually make it happen in the end. But there's... Um, I know for a fact that uh, doing gigs like this is a, a lot of hard work and a lot of hours put in and uh, it's tough, but we keep riding it out and uh, we'll see how it goes. We've got a lot of things coming up. We've got this weekend happening and um, it's not too, only a few weeks away, a few weeks away we've got the Australian Motorcycle Festival yep. and also the third round of the championship at Wynn Stadium and the Motorcycle Festival will be at Lang Park beside it. So uh, we're hoping that that's gonna be a really, really good one for us. We're gonna change it up a little bit uh, the, the motorcycle expos, you know, normally uh, at convention centres and stuff like that. So, yeah. the world's been pretty tough the last few years and uh, we're hoping that this way, the new way that we're going to take it, taking it outdoors, uh, it's a good time of year to do it, but I think it's going to make it easier for everyone to do. Yeah. And uh, it could be, could be really cool. Mm. Well, what we'll do is well, obviously for the iTunes version of this, um, bit hard but for the YouTube and the Facebook ones we'll put all the details below so yeah. people can yeah. uh, go and click on the links and, and check out the sites for the Supercross and the Expo yeah. but um, we've got one more question here I'm going to give this to Davo because he's yeah. a proper racer I'm just a fake club racer <laughs> well being the legend that you are world champion but just for the up and coming races of the future like what advice have you got for him I mean it's uh, attitude wise whatever just uh... yeah well, that's a such a tough one isn't it I mean um since I've been back and um, been back on the Aussie scene, it's been great. It's been really cool to come back to where I started. And I see a lot of kids, young kids coming through now. And um, I guess uh, you think back and you think how long, and you would have been through the same, how long of a slog it is to, to try and actually make it to a profession. Mm. And I guess you've just got to have a lot of belief in yourself. Uh, you got to be a bit of a tough nut too. You got you got to tough it out. There's so many hard times you go through, and like mm. I don't want people to sort of like be on a downer. But I look back on it now and go, how the hell did we do that? Yeah. Like I could never do that again. Yeah. And um, but I think when you when you come from sort of nothing, you got nothing to lose. You want to want to give it a go. So mm. yeah, rip in, don't give up, and that's it. That's a pretty pretty good that's advice. Yeah. All right, we'll, we'll we'll wrap it there, and um, yeah. Can't thank you enough for uh, doing this with us. It's yeah, been no, great and it's, it's, been, it's been awesome and I want to wish Davo all the best for Macau coming up because okay. I've got a huge bit, of, a huge lot of respect, mate, for all the Isle of Mans and, all, you know, some of them races you do, so tough. So I wish you the best and I wish you a safe one and a, and a, and a competitive, great one. Thanks a lot, man. Yeah, yeah, and thank and you. while we're here then, because this is going to air next week, do you want to announce what you are uh, talking oh, well, about? Oh, we come from, from Troy, the Ducati, yeah, the Ducati, Ducati man. Oh. No, well, yeah, I'm riding the, uh, the the V4, the factory V4, the British, by this time, it'll probably be the British Superbike winner, uh, Scott Rudin's bike for yeah. the Macau Grand Prix. So wow, it's yeah, going to be, I'm happy about that. It's going to be pretty cool. Yeah. So straight into Macau on the on the V4. Straight like, in. That's it, yeah. No, no practice, just rip into it. Yeah, like <laughs> I, I think, uh, I think really think you'll enjoy it. Like, you know, the bike's like done, exceptionally good over there and uh, man she was going to be a bit of a beast but yeah, yeah. I, I think it's going to be a good thing to be on that's for sure mm. oh there you have it yeah sweet David Johnson Troy Bowers thanks, thanks guys Legend. yeah cheers, thanks man. so much it was awesome, awesome to see you Legend. yeah cheers, you too and I, I'm, I'm still going my beer but cheers cheers huh <laughs> cheers guys cheers boys <laughs> cheers buddy hey <laughs> get in buckle up and come for a ride with the Hoonatics 
cars, bikes, and anything else with an engine in it. Let's go.